What is going on everybody and welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as J Monster. Thank you for joining me for the second episode of our High Elves campaign. Campaign, rather. We're playing with the Lord Master Teclas and his uh, expeditionary force into the uh, into the turn the the continent of Lustria. And one of our settlements as you can see here in the Great Turtle Isle is under siege by filthy rebels. And apparently the Druki want to talk to us. They declare war upon me. Well, that could have come at a better time. But we will deal with that. It's uh as it becomes relevant. They'll probably attack the Golden Ziggurat first, I would imagine. Which I, I'm not a big fan of. But once we beat these guys back, things should be okay. So they're going to go with a very small force towards... Hmm. Now, these guys have definitely seen better days. But honestly, they've got the numbers and the archers to deal with that very small Druki force. So I'm not too worried about that. The, the biggest concern I have right now are these rebels. Power. So we're going to move forward, lift the siege of Great Turtle Isle, then we will wheel back around uh, after the Druki have been crushed. Their one army is going to be swept in the field, and then we will move on the Chamber of Visions and, uh, and incorporate that into our empire. But first, thi first things first, we've got a couple things that we can do here. Um, we're going to make this an economic powerhouse, but we need a plaza. So, Plaza, definitely something we want to invest in, and Elven Artisan is going to be the next thing. Because we want to work on things that are going to increase our public order, because that is in the shits right now. And also our money, and the Elven Artisans are really the best way to do this. I find that for the minor provinces, if you build at least a Plaza and the Elven Artisan, like standard, and then fill this in with another economic building or whatever you feel like you need, maybe a wall, for example, then you will do really well for yourself. Techless. Uh, can't quite get there yet, so we're going to pass the turn. And the next one should bring us into contact with these uh, with these High Elven Rebels. Sentinels of Zeti laying siege to my fortress. Or rather, the, the Druki laying siege to my uh, my fortress here. That's a really easy fight for us. Uh, do we want to fight it? We'll just auto-resolve that. We have other things to do. So the garrison took most of the damage, except for our poor spearmen down here, who took a lot. Uh, we will, I guess, give everybody experience? Yeah, we will. My Definitely. So that's it for the rebels. My infinite knowledge is yours. Now let's finish these guys off. I will give you Another easy auto-resolve victory. Or play some more units. We're going to pop Teclis, Teclis <laughs> down into Replenishment Stance. And he's going to need, I would say, that yeah, looks about right to me. So that's going to give us eight archers and uh, seven spearmen plus a, an infantryman. Gets Teclis a little bit of extra experience, which is good. Uh, wary, I think this is going to help us move into, um, into the rest of the blue tree, which is important. But for the time being, let's uh, let's play with his magic a little bit. We're gonna give him that extra flock of doom, and then we'll move on towards quartermaster. Wisdom awaits. Uh, over here, things looking good. The garrison can hold out. They'll be fine. They'll hold out long enough for me to bring Teclas and his army across the uh, the land bridge. So we're gonna pass the turn there. Let's see. I'm gonna get a couple rights here. That's also important. So if you guys don't know what rights are, um, they are spells that you can. I, I guess you could consider them spells that uh, give you faction bonuses on the campaign map, and also a, a few things on the battle map as well. This one over here, the Invocation of Vol, gives you some bonuses for your Sword Masters of Hoth, uh, the White Lions of Trace, and stuff like that. But we're not going to worry about that for a while. Um, we are going to replace all of our Spearmen with Phoenix Guard, eventually. Um, so this will be something that we use at a later point in the campaign, but for now, yeah, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, this really useful, but I will be able to get my public order under control in the next few turns anyway, so I'm not going to spend the 2,000 gold on that right now. Um, this this isn't really all that, that useful for us at the moment, so we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and skip on the rights for now. Techless. And that, I think, should be good for the turn. Yes, indeed. There we go. Oops, I totally forgot to disband this guy. So we're gonna do that. Ah! There we go. Disband him. And look at our income go up. The Asa are troubled. Hmm. 
A rally field. This is one of the... You know what? That's going to unlock some technology for us. So we've got the money to do that now. So we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to move Teclis to the... Uh, to the front of this land bridge, and we should be able to move across in the next few turns. Uh, maybe it's better if we do this. Yeah, get us close enough. So the next turn, we're within striking distance of the Druki. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. All right, is there anything else we can do? Uh, let's take a look at my provinces. Turtle Isles, public order is now improving. That's a good thing. It's mostly due to the plaza that we built. You and you know what? I guess there's a little bit of extra money as well, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll increase that. The High Elves, it's important to note, have a really nice bonus when it comes to Public Order. I think at max Public Order you get something like an extra recruitment slot, like 10%, 10% or so uh, extra tax income and things like that, so it's really big. Yeah, the Dark Elves are now retreated to their Citadel at the uh, Chamber of Visions over there. Alright, so this is one of the cool new campaign things, like events, that'll pop up randomly. I really like them. I find they add a lot more to the campaign. The first Warhammer campaign felt really empty and kind of boring, like there wasn't much going on in the campaign map aside from armies. So, it's this is a really nice change in my opinion. So let's read this out. The young, a young prince, impetuous and unknowing of the ways of court, has flown in the face of the Order of Precedence, speaking out against his elders publicly. Naturally, scandal has ensued. The Phoenix King is not required to wade into the hierarchical shuffles of the court. Scuffles, rather. Yet the prince shows promise. He's the prince that shows promised. The prince that was promised. It would be unfortunate if he fell from grace due to his naive impropriety. Now we can reimburse the offensive parties. Offend offended parties? That's, that costs us a lot of money. Uh, we can privately chide him, which will increase our recruitment costs. Which will honestly cost us more. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I don't want to allow him to be damned. So we're going to pay the gold, get a little bit of extra influence, because we're really lacking in influence. So now we can potentially save up for a really useful general when we get to the point where uh, that's what we want to do. Definitely not. Now let's see. The Chamber of Visions. What kind of garrison does it have? It's got a really small garrison. My Lawmaster of I don't think it has walls either. I'm willing to bet this that it doesn't have walls. Yeah, it's not a, uh, a realm capital. So we're going to pop into here. Oops, I didn't want to do that, actually. Uh, we'll go back to normal. That's interesting. Wins of magic power reserves. Speed 10% for all spellcasters. Uh, so we will go ahead and pop into our replenishment stance. We're just going to give us access to the global recruitment, but we can't really do that right now. And we've got enough forces to beat the Dark Elves anyway, so I'm not super worried about it. Uh, that's all we can do for the turn. Let's go ahead and let's pass it, and we'll see what the next season brings to us. But yeah, so far I, I do like the campaign, I like what they've added to it, but there are some things that I feel that they really should have changed for the better. I mean, they did uh, they did a slightly better job with sieges, they're a lot more open. Uh, that's one of the things I've noticed is that the layouts are a lot more open, but still, there's not a lot of them, and they're just they're just not as cool, I think, as some of the other, uh, some of the other titles that have sieges in them. So we're going to go ahead and siege these guys. By the gods. And that is going to be... Yeah, siege was really available when attacking walled settlements. So this is not a walled settlement. It's another one-sided battle, but you know what? We haven't seen the Druki in battle so far, so we are going to fight this one. Let's take a quick look at the battlefield. That's interesting. I wonder if they're going to come to us, because I don't want to push for that choke point. That would be an ugly thing for us. Uh, well, our archers actually are ranged there, so if they want to arrange themselves in a choke point, I'll just shoot them to death. But in any case, I'll see you guys on the battlefield. All right, so we'll have standard sort of procedure. Spearmen in the front, archers in the back. Very simple formation. Uh, swordsman of Hoeth. We're going to keep you guys away from those dark shards because they will do a lot of damage to us. Teclas out in front, leading his forces, well, from the front, as you would expect. For such a renowned hero. There we go. Uh, do we want to gamble? Let's gamble. Let's see what happens. Let's roll the dice. Roll the bones, as it were. Hey, it actually paid off for once. What do you know? Wow, it's a lot of extra magic. Let's see. So the Dark Elves are going to come to us. So let's move our forces around. And we are going to pop you guys into one control group. Give me control group three. Let's take a look at the Druki in all of their glory. This is my first look at them myself as well. 
They seem a little bit camera shy. Oh, that looks so cool. The dark shards with those uh, with those tower shells—they look like riot police, like really edgy riot police. Damn, those Druki look cool. I hope they come all the way to us. I hope they come and say hi. That would please me greatly. It also save me a lot of trouble. Man, those repeater crossbows look cool. Let's see. I think they have some of the dragon whatever units, the corsairs. I know they have them somewhere. Red spears. Yeah, we've seen lots of those. Bleak swords. Blackheart Corsairs. That's the ones I wanted to see. Oops. <laughs> that was not what I wanted. I am still not really all that used to the to the uh, to the camera for this game, so you have to excuse me for that little faux pas. All right, there they are. The Blackheart Corsairs. Looking sexy as hell with those sea dragon cloaks. They help protect them from armor. They've got some pretty decent stats, too. I'm going to take a look at them while they move in. Yeah, look at that. Um, no, I want to look I want to look at your spears, or your stats, specifically. The scaled leather of the flightless sea dragon provides a very light yet incredibly sturdy material for armor. So this does protect them from, um, from missiles and things like that. They've got a lot of armor, too. And some decent melee, melee attack and defense. Like, that's a lot of melee attack. And hit free as well, so they're going to do a lot of damage to our poor spearmen. Techless. Let's see if Teclas can actually hit anybody from here. Once they come over the... Yeah, but we could do that. Maybe we could, like, scoot that right over the crest of that ridge. Oh, that's going to be ugly for them. Oh, it's going to hit them. Boom! Oh, got into the regiment in the back as well. It just keeps going. All right. It's game time. Move Teclas back behind the, uh, the lines of our spearmen. Let's see. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. We'll hit most of their front line with that flock of doom. Come on, Teclas. You can do it. Let's focus on those Black Arc Corsairs. They're the real threat. Yeah, Teclas, we're going to have him like dance back and forth a little bit. Yeah, they're missing most of those projectiles, which I'm kind of okay with. Another big shot from Teclas into the front here. Get that fireball off. Boom! Alright, let's We need to focus on those dark shards, because they're the real threat here. So we gotta melt those dark shards as quickly as possible. Ooh, they're not having a good time. Yeah, so they basically insta routed. You can see the power of these high elven archers. The black art corsairs are fleeing as well. Uh, swordsmen of Hoeth, we're going to throw them into the center. Pop a debuff down on these guys. Those bleak swords. Since they're going to really heavily commit in the center, we're going to wrap around them with our spearmen. We're going to try and, uh, and tie down their dreadlord. Alright, so have you guys stop. These three units here. Scoot around the back. Oh, we've got some of those uh, Black Arc Corsairs coming back. Let's see them off. Get a little bit of our Winds of Magic back. I was really lucky to get this um, this Power Stone in the early game. It really helps Teclas out a lot. Let's get down in the action with our Swordsmen of... With our uh, Swordmasters of Hoth, rather. Yeah, those Druki are just taking a beating. Damn, this game is just cinematic as hell. Uh, now the the murderous prowess for the Druki has gone off, so we're going to have to try and deal with these guys quickly. Uh, you guys over here. Scoot you around the back. Check, let's get on the flank. Yeah, these guys are already in position to do lots of damage to the Druki. Let's hit those Dread Spears in the center. You guys collapse upon these uh, these Dread Spears on the Druki right, or their left flank, rather. We'll focus in on the center. Yeah, now their Lord is going to flee. So let's turn all these guys off. Have them stop. I'm going to use our infantry to hunt down their Lord. 
because that is important. Actually, it doesn't really matter, because they're all going to die. It's a, it's a settlement battle anyway, so they're all doomed. That was a pretty solid victory. Let's do a little victory lap with our army here. Taking the sights, as it were. And watch these vicious Druki dogs flee for their lives. For their miserable dark elven lives. Goodbye. Alright. Let's go ahead and send the battle there. We've toyed with them enough, I think. Not too bad. The loss is 38. And this is on this is on hard difficulty. The Druki, I think, really having uh, some difficulties penetrating through that very disciplined high elven spear wall. That's a, it's a fairly impressive victory. We don't even really need the money as much. Uh, but we will loot and occupy. If you're wondering why I'm looting and occupying when I know that it takes a very heavy public penal public order penalty, that's because I want there I want there to be revolts so that I can just put them down brutally and get my lords and my commanders a little bit more experience. Uh, she is perish. That is good. A little bit extra money, some influence, and some uh, some settlement or some uh, way fragments and things like that. Not to mention the extra settlement. So the first thing we want to build here is where is it? Elven Craftsman. My infinite knowledge is Techless now level seven. It's a beautiful thing. Net of Admin Talk. Now that's really useful, especially alongside Chain Lightning. If we can if we can drop Net of Admin Talk on a big blob of foes and then drop Chain Lightning on top of them, it's really really powerful like disgustingly good uh, but we do want to focus on this for the time being because I really want to get our finances in order uh, quartermaster very very strong so I need to get wary to work on draft master we'll be able to get that next uh, a little bit of extra influence there that's nice mission issued that was well done high lord master but we must not waste a moment for the vortex falters Erect a waystone and collect the fragments so we can power the next ritual. We're working on it. Well, that's kind of nice. Let's take a quick look at what he has. Power stone. Really cool. Uh, melee defense and missile resistance. Now, that is big because we're not going to have Teclas in melee very often. He's, it's not what he does. Uh, strikes me. He has an extra public order uh, bonus as well, which is really nice. Okay. So, that is good. Turn that off for the time being. Um, and that's all we can really do for this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and pass, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Oh, hold on a second. Hold the phone. Rebellion of the Forbidden Jungle. Your words are nothing to me. This is Clan Scryer, the evil warlock engineers of the Skaven. I have decided to come and pay us a visit at the Sentinels of Zeti. Well, we're going to show the Filthy Ratmen what we think of that. Are they raiding? Oh, they're raiding me. Ah, oh, you no bastards. My power. Well, we're going to go and attack Tremble them. Before me. I'm tempted to fight that, but that's just three clan. That's not I even worth give it. You or Behold, replenish. My power. My of Hoeth, going I probably should have taken the money from releasing them. Urifair. Let's see if we can get these guys. No, we still can't get them yet. Uh, Techless now level 8, though. That's good stuff. Draftmaster, going down. Plus one experience for all recruits. And pr plus one local recruitment capacity. So now we'll be able to uh, recruit a lot faster. Especially in provinces where we have high public order. Once we've got uh, that going for us, then we'll be able to, to raise forces really, really quickly. Because we get an extra recruitment slot from, um, from the high public order bonus as well. Another now let's see. Victory. Don't have a... We don't have a ton of trade right now, so that won't help us as much. What we want is the growth. We want to be able to grow these settlements really, really quickly, because that's going to be the most important thing. Now, once these guys have been destroyed, we'll be able to move on Mud Isle, which is going to be important to getting our second province. So once we have that, then we can increase the growth in our main province. Let's see what you guys got. You want a peace treaty? You know what? Absolutely not. Who are they at war with? The Sotek Dwarves. Yeah, I don't want to alienate our allies, so you know what? These guys... These guys can pound sand. They're next on my shit list. Oh, another army from the Lizardmen. Well, that is unexpected. But still. I'm Techless, High Law Master of the White Tower. Hmm. A defensive alliance. Now that is really nice. So we're actually going up with them quite a lot. 
Uh, let's see if we can't get a trade agreement. Now, so Clan Scryer. We're going to poop on them. Destroy them. Oh, they raised a whole bunch of troops. It's still not even worth it. I want to have a good battle against this Gaben, and that's that's hardly worth our time. Shackle them. Now, we're actually going to give them the experience. We didn't get much money from that, and we're going to have to fight another battle, so I don't want to have the minus recruitment penalty once we finish off these lizard men. Not much of an army. Again, a lot of swords, some of the Saurus warriors are kind of scary. You can see their stats there, but meh. A lot of skinks there, too, which will which will die quite, quite handily to our archers. So, what do we want to do? Uh, we definitely need to attack them. We don't have a choice. But we're not going to be able to do that for at least... A turn. So I'm going to stick these guys down there in ambush dance. And we'll see if those uh, those lizard men are foolish enough to fall into our trap. They probably want to reclaim Sentinels of Zeti. Oh, what do you know? Come on. Just a little bit closer. Oh, they may be going for the Chain of Revisions. Hmm. Well. First things first. Let's take a look at the Double. Dwarf Realms. And what can the Dowie do for you? Oh, we don't seem to be able to have a trade agreement with them. Maybe we already have one. No, we definitely don't have a trade agreement with them. Oh, let's try a military alliance. Nine. Uh, how much money have we got? Let's try a military alliance. No, it's military access. We already have a defensive alliance. So you know what? Let's not worry about that too much. Let's talk to the Citadel of Dusk. Of Elfwan. They really, they're, they're really Welcome. starting to like us. So let's see if we can't Time get. Precious, so please make Military access request. might be decent. Let's try payments. I will offer them. We got a lot of money, so oof, I'm not giving them that much. Let's try. We'll be generous. Oops, six thousand. No, no way. Most astute. There we go. We got our alliance. Sweeten the deal just to just a tad bit. There is no limit. So let's take Teclas and his army. Elfry. Let's kill Boqui here. Now, that is a lot of Saurus. Oh, that is a lot of Saurus. Almost no frontline skinks whatsoever. But our disciplined high elves, they should be able to stand up to that pretty easily. They've got a lot. Look at that melee defense. Look at that melee defense. It's beautiful. So let's fight that battle. Also, I just realized that I've been missing out on the military uh, advancements and things like that. So I should have got that going now. I should probably should have got that going a couple turns ago. Kind of forgot about it. It's my bad. I'm sorry. Can you guys forgive me? I'm sure you can. That's a lot of winds of magic. You know what? I'm not even going to gamble with that. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with that amount of winds of magic. Um, no, I don't want to fight them in the forest because our archers will just hit the trees and it's not worth it. So I'm going to draw them back to here. Archers in the forest. Techless and friends in behind, except for Techless, who's going to be out front. Let's start. Yeah, so they're going to come right for us. They're just going to beeline. And then they're going to disappear. Interesting. Let's fast forward a little bit. We'll see them once they get to this, uh, to this tree line here. And then we'll open fire. I already kind of see them entering into the woods. I can see some of them coming through the woods. They're sort of phasing in and out, and it, it looks very strange. They just like pixelate in and out of in and out of existence. Let's wait here. Let's wait on the edge of the forest. And there they are, emerging from the woods. Let's do this. Yeah, they're going to get flattened. Look at that damage. There you go, Techless. Get that fireball off. Alright, get behind the lines, bud. Flee! Flee, you fool! Yeah, Techless is going to be just fine. Just fine. Let's take out the skinks. Alright. 
Might as well counter charge. Let's see. Pop that down. Pop that on the Saurus Warriors. Ooh, our poor Swordmaster is taking a lot of damage right now. Okay, so everybody else back here. We need to focus on what's his name. There he is, Bokui. Our Swordmasters are actually losing. What do they got in the center here? There must be some like blessed spawning Saurus or something. Pop that down. Is he dying yet? Slowly but surely. Alright, let's focus all of our firepower on him now. We've wiped out their ranged forces for the most part. Let's flank those Saurus Spears. We have to do that over there as well. There we go. That slant is melting. And he's gone. That is what we need. Let's focus all of our damage now on those skinks. Look at the melt! Look how good those high elven archers are. Honestly, the best archers in the game. Once we get into multiplayer, I'm going to try and play around a little bit more with the high elves. And uh, hopefully that will... We'll be able to see their strength. And I think it's really going to revolve around their ranged firepower and their ability to, like, dictate how they want a, uh, an engagement to go. Which is a really powerful thing to have. There we go. Uh, one more on these guys. That's going to be army losses. How you guys doing? So that look, is looking like a mass route. I'm going to have them hold th their fire. We're going to gun down as many of these lizard men as possible. Yeah, especially right there. Those Saurus warriors with their shields. On. Do it! There we go. We're gonna get it off. Kill as many of these guys as possible. Look at the damage we're doing to them. That was destructive for the lizard men. Like they did not get anywhere with Osaurus whatsoever. And there's the uh the corpse of the great slan mage priest. Rip. Let's get a picture of that. Beautiful thing. And that's going to be all she wrote for the uh, for the Lizard Bros. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and end the battle there. Not bad. Not bad at all. 118 losses. That's going really well for us. On the main battle line, we're just... We're absolute tanks with all of that uh, melee defense that we have going for us. As I expected. Shackle them. Hmm. It's a lot of for punishments. It's a nice amount of money. But you know what? We're not exactly hurting on money right now. Death has come for them. So let's do the replenishments, but just so we can keep our our armies strong. Yeah, because we're gonna have to hunt these guys down and destroy that army once and for all. It's gonna be it. Mm. That will do. So that's gonna be it for the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you in episode three very very shortly. Take care, everybody. Bye. -bye.